I was here installing remote monitoring a couple of years ago and the power plant operator and the school maintenance guy said, hey, can you come take a look at something? The heating system for the schools, which was almost 30 years old at the time, it was leaking out through the cracked old piping into the ground. So, uh, you know, it needed to be replaced. Without the replacement, we weren't able to keep the uh, antifreeze level up in the, the lines enough to where if we had a shutdown, we'd freeze and lose our whole system and all of the buildings dependent on it. You lose heat to a building and all of your pipes are frozen, then they burst. If that were to happen for the community, their schools would have to close. The situation was incredibly dire that we knew we had to spring into action and find a way to fix it. Yakutat is probably the most beautiful place on earth. In southeast Alaska, it's on a boreal rainforest. It rains here a lot and snows a lot in the winter. Uh, it's right on the ocean, so they have a lot of halibut, king salmon. Uh, they have a ton of moose, bears walking around everywhere, lots of deer. Uh, it, it's abundant in, in natural resources and uh, small in size. My name is Rhoda Jensen, my English name is Rhoda, my Tlingit name is Natsi. I um, um, have the pleasure and honor of being the um, Yakutat Tlingit Tribe Executive Director. You'll see a lot of infrastructure within Yakutat really, really outdated and not working properly and it really hadn't been at the school and our children were actually cold. And so it was a huge issue. Children are the center of everything in everything that we do in Yakutat. Everything that comes here has to either be flown in or seasonally barged. And because of that, cost of living is incredibly expensive. A gallon of gas is approaching $7. Due to that, the heating and electricity generation in the community are also very expensive. So the tribe came together and they put down some match money and the city came together and they put down some in-kind uh, of using their heavy equipment for free. And then I went and, and found money from the Helmsley Charitable Trust, uh, which is a philanthropic organization. And uh, then we applied for a grant and we got it through uh, the Alaska Energy Authority, which is a state organization. And then we went to the federal government uh, through the Indian Health Service and we got funding for the last million dollars for expanding into the clinic. This here is our, our public safety building. This is a base where we keep our fire trucks. And this entire building is kept warm by the heat provided in the generators at our power plant. Heat recovery is uh, a process in which we take the heat that is produced uh, by burning diesel fuel to make electricity at the generators in a power plant. And we capture that heat that would otherwise be discharged into the air because it's, a, it's kind of a waste byproduct. And we pipe it underground through a glycol medium to nearby buildings to serve uh, their heat and cooling loads. But in Alaska, of course, all heat loads. Our school and our clinic and this building are probably three of our biggest entities in our community. And being able to heat them uh, with basically little cost at all to the community is, is vital. The school is saving about $300,000 in avoided heating fuel costs, which is enormous to a community of 700 people. Now that the clinic is added on uh, to that recovered heat loop from the power plant, they're also saving over $100,000 a year. Since these systems last about 25 years and more if they're kept up, that puts the total savings uh, given today's current fuel price at nine and a quarter million dollars. When you consider where we are as a planet, the savings is one part of the equation, but also not having to pump excess carbon into the atmosphere is huge.